hi guys welcome back so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna quickly paint a picture for you and you let me know if it resonates with you so you start using a glp1 medication i happen to be on zip bound five milligrams and at first the weight is just falling off and it gets you all excited and you're thinking that at the rate you're going you're gonna hit your goal in no time like much much faster than you ever thought possible and then it seems like all of a sudden that progress you've been making that you were so happy about kind of slows down and eventually sort of comes to a stop and now you're just kind of gaining and losing the same couple of pounds and you're just kind of like in this holding pattern and the scale is not really moving as much as it was before basically you've hit a stall and it doesn't mean that your progress is is halted and like you, you can't go any further than this um stalls are pretty common especially if you have a lot of weight to lose but i think stalls are actually a good sign i know they're frustrating but i think it's actually a good sign that your body is taking a minute to kind of get used to this new weight that you're at in this video i'm going to be talking about why stalls happen in the first place how muscle plays a huge role in that and how to overcome them the right way because there's there's definitely a wrong way of doing it so this video is actually going to be part of a beginner friendly GLP-1 medication and muscle series that I decided to do. And I obviously I'm not an expert, but I have been looking into this topic for pretty much the whole time I've been on this journey. And so I've learned some things along the way that I want to pass along to you. So if you want to learn more about how to lose weight the right way, how to maintain your muscle and maintain your progress long term, then you definitely don't want to miss an episode in the series. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. All right, let's jump right in. First, I just want to touch on expectations really quick. So I know when I first started taking Zepbound, I was so excited at how quickly I was losing the weight. And it was like clockwork. Every two weeks I was losing, every week I was losing two pounds. And it just felt like that was the rate I was going to continue on. And I knew in the past, like my other previous weight loss journeys were never um, that consistent. And it just felt like maybe because this medication is basically magic, that that's how it would continue. But of course, it didn't. And being on these medications doesn't mean that your weight loss is going to be completely smooth the whole way through. It's just not. And that's because our bodies are always changing and they're always adjusting. So if you're experiencing a stall, I just want to encourage you to not lose hope. It's natural and it's just part of the process. So let's talk a little bit about why stalls happen in the first place. At first, because these medications blunt your hunger, you're obviously eating less. So you're in a calorie deficit and you're able to lose all this weight. But over time, your body adjusts to its smaller size and it adapts and your metabolism slows down, meaning that your weight loss slows down. And on top of it, because these medications do such a great job at curbing appetite, sometimes you have situations where people are really just not eating um, enough food at all, which slows the metabolism down even more. Remember, your body's main objective is to stay alive. Like it, it doesn't care that you want to fit into a size 10 jeans or anything like that. It just wants to stay alive. And so if you're stressing it out by not feeding it, it's going to shut everything down and it's going to slow down your metabolism and it's going to want to hold on to the fat that you have because it thinks it needs to preserve that. And here's where things get interesting. And there is a lot of debate on this, but I do believe that your body has um, something called a set point. So it's called set point theory in case you've never heard of this. And it basically just means that your body wants to keep everything as steady and normal as possible. And I've heard your body compared to like a thermostat. So like if you have your thermostat um, at your house set at 70 degrees and the temperature starts dropping, like the heat will kick on so that it can, you know, so that your thermostat could stay at 70. Same thing if it gets too hot, right? Like it'll always bring it down to 70 degrees. And so in a similar way, your body will try to maintain a weight that it feels is normal and it'll kind of resist certain changes to keep you in that that balance now, i don't think it's as dialed in as like you're not able to move you know within five pounds of like any given weight i think it's a much wider range but i think that 
your body does want to keep things in balance. And so this is why I think it's important to lose weight slowly so that it's almost like your body just kind of adjusts over time and you're not freaking it out. So there is something to be said for slow responders or just people in general that are only losing half a pound, one pound a week or every other week even. Um, at the end of the day, you're still going to end up at the same place if you stick with it. So that's a conversation for another day. Now, I don't think that set point theory is set in stone, but I really do think that your body does need time to adjust to its new size. And especially if you've been, you know, heavy your whole life and now you're just all of a sudden losing all this weight. Yeah, it's it's going to it's going to resist that change. In my opinion, it's going to resist that change after a while. Of course, it's not going to do it initially, but after a while, it might start giving you a little bit of a hard time. And I think what we need to do is just have a lot of patience and not try to rush things along. I think it's important to just let our body feel safe before it's ready to lose weight again for us. And I think the worst thing we can possibly do is cut calories further to try to stimulate the, the weight loss again. And we're going to talk about that a little more in a minute. But I think it's so important that when you're, especially like when you're in a stall, that you don't focus on the scale. And there's a lot of other things going on in your body. And I think you just need to take the focus off of the scale not moving and focus on your metabolism instead, because we know that that's the engine that your metabolism running high is what causes your weight loss. And, you know, if you want to be technical fat loss, right, because we know weight loss includes water, um, muscle and fat. So we want to make sure that we're trying to lose as much fat as possible and minimize the amount of muscle that we're losing. Because as we learned in our last video, muscle is what burns fat, but having a high metabolism will get you there. And so when we're focusing on the scale and our first inclination is to cut calories, we're actually doing the worst possible thing, which is slowing our metabolism even further. So that's not going to help us at all, especially in the long run. If you haven't seen the video I did last week, I highly recommend you take a look at that. I will link it in the description, but I basically sort of went into a mini deep dive on why muscle is so important on a weight loss journey, especially if you're on a GLP-1 medication. So I'm not trying to get the views or anything, but I, I just really want to share this information because it's it's really important. So if you're in a situation where you've lost a significant amount of weight on these medications, now you're in a situation where your body, because it's smaller, just needs less calories to function. So whatever calorie deficit you were able to achieve to lose that weight, is no longer enough now in a smaller body. To top it off, if you've lost a significant amount of weight and you haven't been strength training or even doing any kind of regular exercise, then you've probably lost a, a good bit of muscle and now you're burning even less calories than you were before because as we learned in our last video, muscle burns fat. Basically, you could end up in a situation where you're eating so few calories just to maintain your weight loss. And we're not even talking about continuing to lose weight. If you still have weight to lose, now you're really in a predicament because how much more can you cut your calories back, right? Like eventually, are you going to get to a point where you're only eating 800 calories a day? Uh, you know, it's definitely not sustainable. And this is why so many people who lose weight quickly without strength training tend to gain the weight back. Their metabolism is even slower than it was um, before they started losing weight. Even a small amount of calories is enough for them to start gaining weight. And it's just a really messed up situation to be in. You definitely don't want to find yourself there if you could avoid it. And if you're hearing me kind of describe these different scenarios and you're thinking, that's me, like, that's why I can't lose weight. I barely eat anything and I'm still not losing then there is hope and there's definitely a way that you can reverse this and fix it and it's pretty simple it's not easy but it is pretty simple the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're eating enough if you're barely eating if you're walking around and you're only eating a thousand calories a day or maybe even less than that 
your body will hold on to the fat. It's it's not going to feel safe to release that. It's it's a matter of survival. It's just going to hold on to the fat. So I know it's tempting to think that you have to cut calories in order to lose the weight, but I promise that if you actually start feeding your body and helping it to not just survive, but to actually flourish, that you're putting it in a better position to allow the fat to to leave because it doesn't feel like it needs it because it's you're you're killing it you know what i mean so you you absolutely have to make sure that you're eating enough you definitely have to prioritize protein protein is what helps build muscle muscle is made up of protein it's made up of other things too but it's primarily made up of protein so if you want muscle you need to eat the protein in order to build muscle so you, you, you need to make sure that you're eating enough and you're getting enough protein. So that's step number one, make sure you're eating enough. And this is why I said that it was going to be pretty simple because I think some of us make this sometimes more complicated than it has to be. And we're sitting around wondering like why and we feel like our body's a mystery and that it's broken and it's not working and this and that. But it's just kind of getting back to the basics and understanding that it, it doesn't have to be complicated. Like it, it, it's as simple and as basic as fueling your body properly. Step number two, I know that I'm going to sound like a broken record and I'm going to get you guys annoyed at me, but it's strength training. <laughs> no surprise. It really is as simple as that. Strength training really truly is the key to keep your metabolism going. Strength training is what helps your body hold on to the muscle that you have and maybe even build more so that your metabolism can do the hard work of burning the fat. Muscle burns fat. We have to prioritize strength training if we want long-term success. If you just want to quickly lose as much weight as possible because you're just focusing on the number on the scale, I really do feel that you're increasing the chances of not being successful because in order to do that, let me just say this actually if you only have 20 pounds to lose then this is not that big of a deal right like you can go on a crash diet i'm not saying it's the way to do it but you can go on a crash diet lose the weight be happy with the number on the scale and not you know have done much damage to your metabolism if you're on a glp1 medication chances are you have a lot more than 20 pounds to lose and this comes from a place of wanting you to succeed. I'm not trying to talk down on you at all. I, you know, I started this medication. I was 214 pounds. I've lost 70 pounds so far. So I'm not, I'm not making light of this at all. But if you're on this medication and you know you have to be on this for a while or long term or indefinitely, then why wouldn't you want to do this the right way? Like why, why wouldn't you want to increase your chances of long-term success? And I feel that the only way to do that is by strength training, because we know that that is the best way to preserve your muscle. And we know that preserving muscle is what fuels fat loss. So if you have a lot of weight to go, wouldn't it make sense to hold on to as much muscle as possible so that your metabolism doesn't slow down and it can continue working for you and continue burning those extra calories and burning that fat? You know what I mean? So I, I'm not trying to act. I really am not. I'm not trying to act like I have it all together and I have it figured out and you need to do it this way because this is the one and only right way. I guess what I'm trying to say is that this is the best way to ensure long-term success. Anytime that you protect and you heal your metabolism, you're going to be better off for it in the long run. And strength training does that. Strength training does preserve and protect your muscle, which therefore preserves and protects your metabolism. So I, I just really want this to come across not in a preachy way, because I, I hate that. Um, I hope I'm not, I, I really do hope I'm not coming across that way, but I just, I, I want to take a stronger um, stance on this or stand, 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 whatever, because I feel like it's so important. And I just, I, I really just want you to succeed and I want us all to succeed. And we are on this medication and 
This is, you know, we're lucky to be alive in a time and age that we have these medications available to us. And I just want us all to maximize the opportunity that we've been given. So yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to come across as repetitive or anything like that. But if you want to preserve your metabolism, the best way of doing that is by strength training. But I promise you don't have to live in a gym. You also don't have to kill yourself and, you know, be done with your workout and feel utterly exhausted. It, does, it doesn't have to be that extreme. So let me know in the comments if you've experienced a weight loss stall in your GLP-1 weight loss journey. And if you did, um, like how much weight had you lost before you hit um, that stall? I'm just curious. If you made it this far and you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.